Hi, my name is Silvia Bertagnolio. I am the technical lead on HIV drug resistance at the World Health Organization in Geneva. You will be watching testimonies from civil society, from Minister of Health, from implementing partners, from academia, from donors, on why HIV drug resistance is important, why we should pay attention to resistance, and what we can do to prevent its emergence and spread. Stay with us. Hello, my name is Professor Ravi Gupta. Uh, I'm at the University of Cambridge and I'm Professor of Clinical Microbiology here. My name is Eleanor Namsoke Magongo. I'm a paediatrician. I work with the Ministry of Health. My name is Bovi Schramm. I'm a molecular biologist, epidemiologist, working with Epicentre Médecins Sans Frontières based in Paris. So I'm Gilles Van Kutzen from Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. Hello. My name is Siobhan Crowley and I'm the head of HIV at the Global Fund for TB, AIDS and Malaria. Uh, hi, I am uh, Dr. Anu Gurung. Uh, I'm the team leader of Communicable Diseases, WHO Country Office, Papua New Guinea. I'm called Moses Supercharger. I live in Uganda, the capital city, Kampala. And I'm a person who has been living with HIV since 1994. My name is Namwanje Shakira. I am a young person living with HIV. HIV drug resistance means the virus became capable to evade the treatment by mutating, uh, meaning viral replication is no longer blocked. And HIV is actually particularly good at this. It has a very high replication rate, and while replicating, it constantly introduces random mutations into its genome, uh, which are basically an error, but also render the virus much more flexible. So, for example, in a situation of incomplete treatment adherence, where you have suboptimal drug levels, this situation selects mutations that happen to render the virus resistance to the treatment. At the level of the individual, drug resistance means treatment failure and the risk to develop advanced disease and death. At population level, HIV drug resistance is a major threat to epidemic control, specifically the third global target of having at least 95% of people on treatment, virologically suppressed, is compromised by HIV drug resistance. Drug resistance increases HIV transmission, morbidity and mortality and burdens the health system. So it's very important to ensure continuous surveillance of drug resistance to implement quality of care to prevent resistance and also to create awareness at the level of policymakers, but also for providers and people living with HIV. The most critical aspects of HIV drug resistance that uh, people should be aware of is, uh, first of all, that over the past 20 years, uh, HIV drug resistance has been increasing, uh, especially in Southern and Eastern Africa where um, up to and more than 10% of uh, people with HIV starting antiretroviral therapy were resistant to the first line antiretroviral treatment um, uh, for HIV. HIV drug resistance leads to treatment failure. Treatment failure leads to new illnesses, death, and uh, transmission of drug resistant virus. If a patient has HIV drug resistance, they are going to have a high viral load that will affect their level of uh, uh, immunity and their ability to fight infections. It will make them sickly, it will reduce their productivity and in turn, if this person is the breadwinner in their home, this is going to cascade to their family. My name is Namwanje Shakira. I am a young person living with HIV. I am an HIV prevention advocate. I am a women's health activist. HIV drug resistance affects the lives of people living in low-income countries in a sense that uh, the higher, the more you keep failing on your medication, you get a more pill burden as the medication keeps on increasing. The tablets keep on increasing as per each line that you fail. And also uh, with drug resistance, we are getting more cases of 
more young young children being born with HIV because their parents were not adhering, or their parents got drug resistance, and in the in, in the end they gave to, they gave birth to kids that were already HIV positive. And then the other thing is it actually leads to loss of life. Once people fail their medication and reach the third line, which is the last level of treatment, and they cannot be they, they cannot be helped by the third line treatment, that leads to death or you know end of one's life. I'm called Moses Supercharger. I live in Uganda, the capital city Kampala. And I'm a person who has been living with HIV since 1994. Basically, what I do in Uganda is to promote quality HIV treatment for people living with HIV and also to educate and empower people living with HIV about the dangers of HIV drug resistance in Africa. People living with HIV all over the world have the biggest role to play to prevent the emergence of HIV drug resistance. One, they need to take their medication religiously to prevent resistance because majority of people failing happen because of poor adherence. So number one, we need to take our medications correctly all the time as prescribed by a health worker. That's our role number one. Secondly, as stakeholders and people living with HIV, we need to find a way of promoting treatment literacy all over the world. Majority of people who fail, fail because they don't know the cause of resistance. People need to be empowered about the cause of HIV drug resistance. People need to be empowered about the solutions to HIV drug resistance. People need to be empowered about the dangers of HIV drug resistance. That is still lacking. So as advocates, as stakeholders, people living with HIV, we need to carry out a global campaign educating the masses about the danger of this problem of HIV drug resistance. Uh, what we can do to prevent uh, HIV drug resistance among young people is first of all we need to educate and engage their caretakers. If young people take their medication, they have their caretakers that help with their treatment. This is a group of people that I feel we have neglected and we need to include them in the treatment literacy plan. We need to teach them about the, the importance of drug adherence and the dangers of drug resistance. Yes, and then for the young people, we need to empower them with information. They need to know why are they taking their medication. They need to know the dangers of not adhering to their medication and as well, what are the benefits of sticking to your treatment plan religiously and hopefully we'll have a better and changed world. We have to prevent HIV uh, drug resistant virus to emerge in the first place. To prevent HIV drug resistance, one needs to take a treatment every day as prescribed and for that there is a need for a continuous uh, supply of medication, there is a need for very good adherence uh, from the patient and there is a need for uh, very good support. In the clinic so you need a good supply chain, you need uh, supportive health staff and you need to ensure that health services make it as easy as possible for patients to take their treatment every day. And uh, that includes uh, giving longer supplies, three months, six months. It includes uh, what we call differentiated service delivery, uh, adapting services to the needs of the patient, providing antiretroviral therapy in the community if that's necessary, um, providing enhanced adherence support to those who need it. Uh, it also requires uh, early detection with viral load of people who are failing treatment and at risk of developing drug resistance. Uh, requires healthcare staff to act upon um, uh, high viral loads, which is a sign of uh, um, a treatment failure. And then uh, requires uh, healthcare workers to switch patients to the adequate uh, second or third line uh, regimen. 
of course, that also means that these second and third line regiments must be present. We need national oversight of whether drug resistance is occurring, where it's occurring, when, how, who, and then to formulate a response to that. When drug resistance emerges, this must be identified uh, rapidly. It requires surveillance by countries so that we know how much drug resistance there is in the population and so that uh, treatment regimens can be uh, timely adapted uh, as has been the case now with the change of first-line treatment from um, uh, efavirenz to dolutegravir. In Papua New Guinea, we um, had the initial drug resistance survey done in about 2004 which showed about 2%, and then uh, another surveillance was done in 2015, which showed a resistance of 16% in the subpopulation level. But at the national level, we did a national pretreatment drug resistance survey, which showed extremely high levels of drug resistance, both in the ART naive and non-naive patients. This was almost the third highest in globally, and therefore, there was a need to change those drugs. And this happened only in 2019. And with the advent of 2020, we could purchase these drugs uh, with, with the adequate uh, analysis and advocacy to the government. So the government could uh, allocate that the money for the, buying the drugs. But to roll out these drugs uh, the, during the COVID-19 response was a big challenge. Uh, and we used uh, innovative methods like using Google Classrooms for ARV prescribers, looking at community surveillance and people living with HIV networks to look at whether the drugs are being received or not. And the amazing thing was that we could do a transition of these drugs to almost 92% during a COVID epidemic. We, in countries with weak health systems which do not have adequate facilities for drug resistance um, to be done at individual levels, we need these kind of surveys to be done even if the rollout of DTG because of huge levels of national stockouts, weak health systems, drug distribution issues, lack of adherence, and huge loss to follow up in countries like in Africa and in Asia and the Pacific. Therefore, I feel that the drug resistance surveys need to be done periodically uh, to look at a population level on drug resistance uh, and, and the emerging threat of, uh, of uh, running out of drugs for HIV treatment. Monitoring uh, HIV drug resistance is very key because it is going to reduce the cost of the HIV program. How? Because if you keep most of the patients on their first line ART treatment, you are going to prevent uh, the country from procuring, procuring a lot of a costly a second and third line uh, ARVs. So if patients are supported uh, to have their treatment optimized, they will stay on their first line or second line for a long time and it will prevent us from moving on to the higher levels of treatment which are more costly with a high pill burden. So the cost of the program will be reduced. Secondly, at a social economic level, the productivity of the country is going to improve because you're going to have more healthy people who are able to work, look after their uh, families, and pay their taxes and therefore the social economic status of the country is also going to do better when you have a healthy uh, population. I think there are a number of key questions that we need to answer in resource limited settings about drug resistance and the first one pertains to the use of dolutegravir, a second generation integrase inhibitor that has now been scaled up uh, hugely in sub-Saharan Africa and across Asia. And this second generation integrase inhibitor is replacing the old drug efavirenz in most regimens. And the speed at which this has happened has been remarkable. But I think we need to know what the outcomes are of this rapid transition. And we need to understand whether drug resistance before the switch um, has compromised potentially uh, the su success of treatment on, on, on dolutegravir. Secondly, we need to know how uh, drug resistance transmission is progressing over time in response to this uh, 
policy change about first-line treatments and therefore surveillance of integrase resistance in patients presenting for HIV care is critical. HIV drug resistance has to be an integral part of the HIV response. There's no way we can be managing large treatment cohorts without knowing what resistance patterns are there when people are first diagnosed with HIV infection, what happens to people on treatment, and also, really importantly, how we respond to make sure that we minimise drug resistance. It's very important for countries to have a national action plans on HIV drug resistance because it supports us to understand the gaps that they have in this particular area, which leads uh, the country to plan and develop targeted interventions to address uh, the gaps around HIV uh, drug uh, resistance. Uh, secondly, uh, this enables countries to come up with a policy framework that is able to support the implementation of HIV drug resistance in the country. And thirdly, in the action plan, we usually include a section that enables us to monitor what we are doing ar around HIV drug resistance. And this monitoring is very important, especially when it comes to uh, early warning indicators that highlight uh, the burden of HIV drug resistance uh, uh, in the country. So you need an action plan to support you to be able to monitor what you are doing and uh, uh, lastly, uh, it's very important uh, because uh, donors will support what you have within your action plans, your strategic uh, action plans, and uh, what you have in your policy framework. So by all means, having a national uh, HIV drug resistance action plan is going to be very instrumental for resource mobilization, to guide implementation and monitoring of HIV drug resistance in the country. What the Global Fund does to help fight against HIV drug resistance is we support countries. When it makes most sense, we would encourage countries to put it into a funding request. When the government already has a robust laboratory and surveillance mechanism, it's much more sustainable and in the long-term interests of the country to make sure that the drug resistance is an integral part of that. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed the video. The take home message is, if we don't look for resistance, we will not find it. If we find it, but we don't act upon the finding by uh, fixing the root causes that generated resistance and by preventing its spread, we will be accounted responsible. We can only end AIDS if we also end HIV drug resistance.